chicken? Yes, it was. I couldn't find the plastic, you know. Yeah. Anyway, good morning and welcome to Junior Church, or should I say, howdy, howdy. partners. <laughs> Thank you for moseying on into Junior Church this morning. That's right, today is a special day here at Victor. Yep. It's a big day. Yep. You ready? Because mm. I, I got a lot. It is our harvest day. Yep. Coming to the fall time of year, we celebrate and thank God for all that he's done for us. The bounty. We got a lot of farmers in our church, so we love to celebrate harvest day. It's also Pastor Appreciation Day. Thank we you, love Pastor. you, Pastor. Uh -huh. Thank you. And then also, it is Friend Day. So we have a lot going on oh, here today. It's also National Smarty Day. Oh. Yeah. So. And I'll tell you what. For a long time, Smarties were my favorite candy. So, no okay. kidding. Yeah, they were. They were. Huh. I've become more of a Reese's Cup guy lately, but mm -hmm. man, Smarties, Smarties and Sundrop. Well, anyway, you cheat, so that's probably not why a sponsor. So smart. Not a, a sponsor Smarties. yet. Smarties and Sundrop. Uh, but anyway, we thank you for joining us here today, yeah. and uh, we're going to have a great day today. Hey, you know what's interesting what's is that? it's Friend Day, right? Yep. But today's Bible lesson, as we continue through. The signs of the Savior. Signs of the Savior. We're learning about four guys who helped their friend. Oh, yeah. They awesome. brought him to Jesus. That's awesome. That's a good friend. Yeah, that's, some, that's four good friends. Ooh. Do you have four good friends like mm, that? That's a good question. That's a good question. Anyway, well, hey, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We're going to have fun with song time today. And we're going to get started with Junior Church. Ready? 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 Right now. Welcome to music time! Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hey, I was thinking, Brother Cody. What's that? Since this is Friend Day, uh -huh. and you know, we get to wear cowboy hats and stuff, mm -hmm. I thought we could sing one of my favorites. You got a friend hey, hey, in me. Copyright. How Number one, that, that's not a junior church song. <laughs> Number two, uh, I'm sure we have to pay, you know, money for that. So we're going to uh, bypass that. But I did have a good idea. What's that? We can sing about the best friend in the world. Jesus. Yep. We're going to sing it. what a friend we have in Jesus. We'll sing one verse mm -hmm. uh, of that today. So if you know it, sing along. It's a, it's a hymn. Sometimes we, you know, we sing a lot of junior church songs in junior mm -hmm. church. But you know what? Hymns are great as well. And it's friend and day, so, so it's perfect. And it's friend day. Yeah. Uh, so it's perfect. Just want to make sure my microphone's still on. So let's sing what a friend we have in Jesus. You ready? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. Great job. All right, boys and girls, it's time for the Bible lesson. Have your Bible, let's open them up. Mark chapter number two. Mark chapter two. And we are going to continue our series on the signs of the Savior as we've been learning about the miracles of Jesus Christ while he was walking on this earth. Uh, we have been talking about how Jesus turned water into wine. We learned about how Jesus helped Peter last week and how he caught a bunch of fishes. And then Jesus called Peter and said, come, follow me, and I'll make you a fisher of men. We learned about how Jesus healed a man's son a couple weeks ago, and we just continue our series here as we hear about another sign or another miracle of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 2, and on this friend day, we're going to learn about four very good friends from the Word of God. Let's look at verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, 
And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, and so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Oh, wow. What an amazing story. What an amazing tale of some true friends. Whoo. These friends were so true to this man. And they had so much faith in Jesus Christ that they were willing to climb up on a roof for their friend. Wow. Have you ever seen someone on a roof before? Hmm. Well, let's just be clear. It's not safe for any children to go up on the roof, right? You should not go up on the roof ever. It's not safe for children. But have you ever seen, like, someone up on the roof? Maybe they're fixing the roof. Or maybe they're cleaning out the chimneys. Or maybe they're just contractors or something. Maybe they're up there working on something. Maybe they're putting up a satellite dish or something. Well, in our story today, these four friends were helping their friend on the roof. Only they weren't roofers. They weren't fixing a satellite. They weren't fixing a roof or nothing like that. They were bringing their friend to Jesus. Wow, that's, I think that's what a true friend should do. A true friend should bring their friend to Jesus. First, I'd like to look at a crowded house right here. Uh, as we read in Scripture today, Jesus was in the town of Capernaum, and he was teaching and preaching, and everybody heard about it. So the whole town was all gathered around, and people came from near and far to hear Jesus preach. Could you imagine being able to hear Jesus preach Wow, what an amazing thing that would be to get to hear the Son of God preach. I have some of my favorite preachers and teachers in this world, but I'm pretty sure if I heard Jesus preach, he'd be number one. He's probably the best preacher there ever was. He probably preached with much love and much energy and just he was probably so interesting to listen to oh it's probably amazing well all the people in the town were gathered around listening to jesus preach and i tell you what it was so crowded in this house that the bible says there's no room to even get through the door you couldn't even get to the door there were so many people just trying to listen through the windows listen through the door just to just to get a glimpse or just to hear Jesus, as he preaches. Well, in the story, there was a crowded house, a bunch of people all around, but we also see four men and their sick friend. There was four men who had a, had a friend who was sick of the palsy. That's what it says in the scriptures. It says that he was paralyzed. He was not able to walk. And he, and he was carried by his four friends, on a bed, probably not a bed like you or I would think about, you know, not, probably not the one like you have, but something that they could carry him with. And th these four friends, they heard about Jesus. They heard, hey, Jesus has done miracles. Jesus has healed a sick son. Jesus has turned water into wine. Jesus has helped Peter catch a bunch of fish. That was amazing. Maybe Jesus can heal our sick friend. Now, keep in mind here that these four men were in this crowded city, and they had their work cut out for them. But they had faith in Jesus Christ, and they loved their friend, so they were willing to carry their friend to Jesus. Well, they finally made it to the house 
And there's just no way. Remember what we said earlier, there was no way to get to the door. The door was blocked. People everywhere. It was a crowded house. Standing room only. They had to figure out how can we get my friend to Jesus. There's got to be a way. And suddenly they look up. Oh, boy, I have an idea. Oh, boy. There's a roof right there. And on that roof, I'm sure once we're up there, we, you know what we could do? Maybe there's like a door up there or something. I don't know. But they got up there, got the friend up there. There's no door, no windows. They broke up the roof. Oh, could you imagine the owner of that house? They're sitting there just listening to Jesus preach, and they start hearing thuds on the roof. What is happening? Stuff starts falling down. Ah, what's going on? They were breaking up the roof, and then they lowered their friend down right in front of Jesus, right before the Lord. Jesus turns, looks at the man in the bed, Everyone's watching Jesus. What's Jesus going to do? What's he going to do? Is he going to reprimand him? Is he going to be loving? Is he going to be compassionate? Is he going to be upset that, he, that they broke the house? Looks at the sick man and says, Son, thy sins are forgiven. <gasps> thy sins are forgiven? Whoa, is that what we expected? I thought we expected to see Jesus you know, take him by the hand and pull him up to his legs. Well, what we must notice first is this man had a problem on the inside. That's a sin problem. You know, the Bible says we all have that sin problem. Uh, Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sinned into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sin. Sin. Everybody has the sin problem. And this sick man had a spiritual problem too on the inside, just like us. And Jesus looked at him and said, Thy sins are forgiven. Now his sins were forgiven because it was an act of faith. Not because of any works that this man did. Could this man do any works? He was a paralyzed man. He couldn't go to work. He couldn't walk to church. He, he couldn't hardly do anything. He was paralyzed. So he could not work his way to forgiveness, could he? The same with you and me. We cannot work so much that our sins are forgiven. In fact, the only way our sins can be forgiven is through faith in Jesus Christ. And that day, there were some other people in the crowd there. They were scribes, Pharisees. Remember them? They didn't really like Jesus. They were probably just there to listen in to see what was happening. And when they heard Jesus say that his sins were forgiven, in their hearts, they didn't even say it out loud, they said, who does this guy think he is? Only God can forgive sins. What is, is he saying he's God? Is he saying that he can forgive sins? Remember, they didn't say this out loud, they said it within their hearts. But Jesus heard what was being said in their hearts, in the inside. Look, God hears and God sees all things. Nothing is hidden from the Lord. He knows our hearts, he knows our minds, and he can hear our innermost thoughts. And Jesus turns and says, Is it easier for me to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise and take up thy bed and go thy way. He says, I've done this so that you may see the Son of Man has power to forgive sins. I've done this so you know that I am the one written about in the Old Testament. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Savior. And I'm here to bring forgiveness and to show mercy and love. Oh, those scribes were steaming. They were very upset. You see, the scribes, they were not ready to accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah or the Savior. They were very upset. But Jesus turns back to the sick man and says, Rise, 
take up thy bed and go thy way. And the Bible says that the man sick of the palsy, strength came to his legs and he stood up and went his way. Wow! We see this man and his friends came to Jesus in faith, believing that Jesus Christ could help them, believing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would be able to bring healing and salvation. And this day, this man who could not walk could now rise and walk and live like an average man, an average ordinary man who could go to work, he could, he could walk down to the market now, he could go for a hike. He couldn't do that before. But Jesus brought healing. And we know that Jesus is the great physician. He healed his body. Not only did he heal his body, but he washed away his sins. He brought forgiveness to this man. And he was made whole that day, spiritually and physically. We learn from the four men in this story that a real friend will help others get to Jesus. Is there someone in your life who needs Jesus? Maybe a friend, maybe someone at school, maybe a cousin, a mom, a dad, grandma, grandpa. Is there somebody in your life that needs Jesus? You could be the one to bring Jesus to them. You can bring them to Jesus. Well, how, how do we do that? How do we bring our friends to Jesus? Well, number one, uh, just some ideas. We could, we could give them a gospel track that's got the word of God in it and tells them how they can be saved, how they can have their sins forgiven about Jesus on the cross, how he died for them, how he rose from the grave, how it says that uh, Jesus did all these wonderful things for you. And he can give forgiveness of our sins. We can invite them to church. You can invite them to big days like that, like today. We're having friend day here at church. You can invite them out to, hey, we're having a fun time at church. We're going to have we're gonna have a harvest day, friend day. And we're going to have a good time. But we're also going to learn about the Lord. But something else we could do. We could write them a letter, send it in the mail, send them a text message. I know, I know I'm talking to kids here, but I know most of you guys have phones now. You could send text message to someone in your family. Say, hey, Jesus loves you. God loves you. Will you please come to church with me? Just little things like that. We could even ask them if you could tell them what you've learned in the Bible. Maybe just tell them what you learned in Sunday school. Tell them what you learned in online junior church. Tell them what you learned in, in junior church, in big church. For, for those of you that are a little bit older, in big church. You know, We can use these experiences with God's word, to share with others. Tell people about the things of God. These are all ways that we can, we can introduce them to Jesus. And these are all ways that we can spread the gospel. And boys and girls today, God just calls out to you and to me and says, hey, won't you be that friend? Won't you be that friend to bring your friend to Jesus? Won't you be that one to carry your friend right to the feet of Jesus? That's what God calls out to you and to me. He says, won't you be that friend. Congratulations to our winner! Hey. Nice. Hats off Way to you. Go. Hats <laughs> off to you. <laughs> Woo. That's right. Yeah, these Thank you for don't sitting. breathe at all. Yeah. I know. That's, that's why you see cowboys doing this all yeah. the time because their heads all sweaty from their hats. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for sending in your answers. We'll get your prize to you. And uh, hey, you can be on the wheel if you send in your answer next Sunday. If you know the answer to this week's ready <gasps> question, question of, of the week. week with Brother Matt. Hey, that's me. Oh boy, here we go. The question of the week. Send it in to 717 739 6536. 
Yeah, text it in. Don't send it by the Pony Express. No, Pony Express. To the post office. That's right here. Right here. Post office. I wonder if these are Pony Express ponies. I don't know. Anyway, send in your answer to Brother Matt's question, which is... <gasps> what part of the building did the four friends tear up? Remember, they were trying to get their friend to Jesus, and then they decided, hey, I'm going to tear off the... Fill in the blank. What is it? Send it in. 717. 739-6536. Or if you're here today, turn it in. Just hand it in. Watch today, turn it in. You can get your name on the wheel. So, hey, hopefully you have a great print. Where are you going? Well, Tony, I forgot to show something to you here. What you, what you got there? I got, I got, I was outside cleaning up, trying to clean up the yard a little bit. Someone just throwing these these signs out everywhere. It says, okay, corral, shoot out. Were, were they thrown out or were they staked in the ground? Uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, petting zoo. And were they just thrown or were they in front of games? In front of games. Why don't you mention it? I think they were in front of stuff. For the match. Games. Today, October 2nd. Kitty corral. Is friend day, yeah. harvest day, I know. and after service yeah. we have lunch and games. We have a hayride, face painting. Uh, We're gonna have a, a rubber band shooting gallery, all that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure these are the signs that were marking those games. How are the kids gonna know how to get the way anyway? That, that's my oh, point. Man. Anyway, hey, hopefully you enjoyed uh, Junior Church Day. If you haven't already, join us. This morning at 10 30. Yeah. It's not 10 30 already. Join us this morning at 10 30 for a friend day, harvest day. You can be a part of these games. Yeah. But hey, have a great day. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Hey, you got to get the signs Ooh. back out there. Bye, man. Bye.